Welcome back, my beautiful friends. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York. I'm your host, Zen Sands. Now coming up in our Crypto Frontier segment brought to us by CCP Digital, we're joined by Chris Pulley, who serves as CEO of CCP Digital and Bad Media Group. CCP Digital is a decade-old digital advertising agency with really unique access and knowledge in the blockchain and cryptocurrency industries, and this is especially important. Chris and his team offer a very competitive advantage as we enter the era of Web3. Today, he's joined by Alan Scott, who's an advisor to Railgun Privacy Project. He's also co-founder of the DeFiCon conference, where they're essentially reimagining philanthropy with DeFi. Now, as Chris and Alan get settled into our broadcast room, let's chat Railgun Project. Now, they believe, as do I, that privacy is something all humans instinctually value. Now, the Railgun Project advocates that privacy is a well-recognized human right, and even those who deny it to others expect it for themselves. They claim that privacy and anonymity should be the default, not the exception, that our consent should be needed before our personal or financial details are relieved and revealed to any third party and beyond. And to fully understand the weight railguns technology effects is DCG, which is a digital currency group, the parent company of Coindesk actually, that FYI hit a $10 billion valuation late last year, has entered into a strategic partnership with Railgun DAO, and that is their decentralized autonomous organization, through a $10 million investment to bring a privacy protocol to decentralized finance, DeFi, that is some news. Wow, very impressive stuff here. Clearly, Railgun must fill a gap in the market and solve the privacy problem that everyone who uses cryptocurrency will come across over the next decade, without a doubt, especially going into Web3. And researchers have warned of the privacy dangers of Web3 and DeFi. Well, now Railgun and its protocols hopes to fix them. Welcome to the show, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Chris, yeah, absolutely. Nice, Chris, nice to have you back at this point. You're on so often. It's, I'm going to change the name of the show to a moment of Chris. No. <laughs> now back to Crypto Frontier because uh, we're on the clock. So a little bit of context for our new listeners and viewers. Uh, this segment is now our top two in popularity, hovering at 10,000 listeners per hour via all our platforms. And these crypto enthusiasts, and I am one of them, cheer us on all the time. Now, we are bursting with excitement at the potential of blockchain-based um, ledgers, right? Uh, to decentralize the finance sector and the web, phenomenon known as DeFi and Web3, respectively, at this point, right? And there are many critiques of these two visions, including a recent study, Chris, that found that supposedly anonymous transactions could be linked to personally identifiable information, right, PII, and a new wave of blockchain platforms and protocols seeks to bolster privacy in what many believe is the next paradigm in computing. Talk to me about why there is such a need for railgun at this piv pivotal time coming into Web3. Well, there's definitely a, a, a serious need for privacy. And the, uh, the, the need is, is multifaceted. In this instance, we think about the, the large players. You know, we think about the markets, how big the U.S. market is in general and how small the crypto market is. And if we're going to see significant investments from the traditional markets and see that high volume come in, there has to be a sense of privacy because there are large amounts of money being moved around. And these wallets are, you know, currently you're able to see what's in a wallet. If I were to buy something uh, with my wallet, they can see everything in my wallet. And if there is an identifier, no, they know everything that I have. So in a sense from the retail user, privacy is seriously important. And to the largest markets and for the ability for large capital to come into the, um, the crypto markets, privacy is a necessity. Yeah, well said. Um, and you know, that brings us to, to something quite interesting. And Alan, I'm going to play devil's advocate here. Uh, so please bear with me because I'm a huge fan of, of the Railgun Project. But 
Um, we now have all heard about the environmental impacts from crypto damages, and that's one thing. But the less discussed is the impact of Web3 and DeFi on user privacy, to Chris's point. And proponents argue that Web3 will improve user privacy by putting individuals in control of their data via these distributed personal data stores. But critics say that the transparent nature of public distributed ledgers will make transactions visible to all participants is um, anti ethical to privacy, right? So Web3 requires you to give up privacy entirely. Some would say that NFTs and blockchains are all public by default and terrible for ownership and security. What do you say to this? Yeah, um, I, I tend to agree with that, right? I don't think that privacy should be, you know, an option. Um, it should be something that people um, are allowed to have by default, right? It shouldn't be the price that we pay by using crypto. Um, and now people would probably be, I think a lot of people who aren't really um, used to the space don't really recognize the fact that the pseudonymous nature of like your crypto account isn't private. Uh, and in fact, there's a lot of companies out there like Chainalysis and Nansen who are taking, collecting, collating, and then selling your information. Um, and it's all public for people to take and, and do this. And I think now in this data-driven economy where people are at the whims of like pressure groups you know, large organizations that are trying to market to them. Um, I think it's never been more important to to have privacy, especially if like this is the future of finance and people's finances are going to go to Web3 and DeFi. Um, I don't think that they should be, you know, uh, pressured by these groups by way of their financial privacy. Yeah, I know I couldn't agree more. I mean, listen, I these studies are coming out um, by by the dozen, right? And one study showed that several DeFi sites rely on third parties and occasionally even leak um, your Ethereum address to those third parties, mostly to API and analytics providers. But uh, one tracker can access Ethereum addresses in 56% of the 78 DeFi sites examined in the study, which is mind boggling to me. And those third party services could, in theory, link the Ethereum addresses to other PIIs they hold about the user. And this is this this study that's coming out about this just is opens your eyes to how necessary um, what you're doing at the railgun you know, with the Railgun Privacy Project, how necessary really this is because Ethereum address leakage to Google is particularly problematic because the company likely already has PII about us, which it can then link to our Ethereum address, which then can be linked to your transaction history on the blockchain. So you kind of feel scared when you're coming into this. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, um, it's something that people should be talking more about. I mean, you know, uh, even even in the early 90s, whenever we we're talking about like uh, HIPAA regulations and stuff like this, right, everyone knew that eventually, like, in a data driven economy, like everyone was going to collate all of this information about everyone, and there will be a digital version of yourself, right, which collects everything about you, um, in regards to like your attitudes, your achievements, your behaviors. And uh, it's, it's super true, you know, you fast forward to today, uh, you see that, you know, you have companies like Facebook, Google, who are, you know, data driven and their sole purpose is to take and, you know, collect your information and sell it to the highest bidder. And if that, you know, leaks out to your financial data, it could be, uh, uh, it could be pretty dastardly for those who, you know, value their privacy. Oh yeah, it could be devastating. I mean, I certainly value my privacy. Um, so explain to us how Railgun is different from other privacy preserving protocols, uh, you know, either Alan or Chris or. Go ahead, Alan, you take this one. Yeah, sure. I love this question. Um, so the easiest way to take and understand what Railgun is, is that it is a smart contract system that effectively acts like a private wallet for your ERC-20 tokens. So what you can do is take your, your tokens, put them into the Railgun smart contract, and then transact with those in a private fashion on public ledger blockchains like Ethereum, uh, Polygon, Binance, Smart Chain, and um, not you know, dox yourself or the, the balance of your diamond bags. Right, exactly. And, and you know, if we're talking to the average person, one would say, what can you use Railgun for? Um, what's the simplest way that you can explain this? Yeah, so you can use it to make private transactions, right? You know, if you have to, um, you know, make a payment to, let's say, um, anyone uh, in the, the DeFi space, you can do that privately with your Railgun balance. You can take and do um, swaps. Uh, you can take and accumulate a large position in a private balance. Uh, the the limits are really um, the sky's the limit, I guess. Right. Yeah. yeah exactly. And and how how easy is Railgun to use? 
Yeah, so if you're uh, familiar with using something like MetaMask um, or just a, you know, a DeFi app in general, uh, this will be transparently easy to use. Um, that's the the goal. Uh, we constantly work to to build a really good UX UI experience to you know allow people to use privacy and not have to worry about the really intense technology that's behind it that you know makes it possible. Yeah, without a doubt, and I love uh, that you guys practice what you preach. Something a little bit more advanced um, that really caught my attention is that Railgun advocates to have separate governance tokens for every blockchain on which the Railgun privacy token has been deployed. And as you claim that there is currently no way to bridge tokens from one chain to another in a fully trustless way without you know, essentially some entity within Railgun taking mm. custody of those tokens. But talk to me about this, because why does there need to be a governance token for each chain? Can't there just be one ERC-20 governance token for all chains? Yeah, so at this point, there is no like off-chain governance of the protocol. In fact, it's all on-chain. So, uh, and it's fully decentralized. Anybody, in fact, can take and submit a proposal to the governance smart contract and take and have the, the, the stakers of the rail tokens on that chain vote for it. And um, you really brought up a really great point. You know, whenever you bridged um, assets, this tends to be heavily centralized and there's just no really good way to take and do a trustless and uh, permissionless governance system that's cross chain at this point. Uh, there's some people in the space that are working on it, but it's really nascent technology. Um, so rather than taking risk, uh, the security of the system, you know, we've decided to take and deploy governance tokens uh, throughout the system. So whenever we deployed on Polygon, uh, the governance tokens were deployed on that chain and the, the list will go on as we deploy on other chains. Um, you know, maybe in the future, there might be a way to take and do cross chain governance in a truly decentralized and trustless fashion. But at this point, it's uh, not really happened. I think it's brilliant. I think it's great. And it's so unique and proprietary, really. And it puts a, a nice comfort level into into somebody like me who's looking at it from bird's eye view. Um, and what's also interesting, and I, I think, Chris, I want to hear from Chris in this particular case, because you brought up um, the DCG um, kind of acquisition here. As part of the partnership, DCG uh, has acquired and, and staked over $10 million of Railgun's native rail token and donated over $7 million in stable coins to the project decentralized autonomous organization, right? We've been talking about DAO a lot lately. Um, do, you, do you guys both feel that Railgun's back end is strong enough to endure this high demand? Because there's going to be a level of really high demand at this point. Well, that, that's a great question. And, um, you know, this this topic is uh, has so many um, perspectives we can discuss. So when it comes to the, the in investment from a capital firm, um, I think that indicates uh, how important this is, right? To, to, for an investment firm to make an uh, investment into a decentralized autonomous organization with their money. I mean, it's just, just the sound of that uh, is foreign to so many in the finance industry of why and how and well not to alan right because the if, if, to trade fi he comes from that background so it's so interesting because right. in DeFi, it's the it's the public and immutable blockchain that acts as as a decentralized trust source right conversely um legislative bodies and regulators provide public governance in the trade fi space and that means that they create these central points of control that potentially limit market access and increase the risk of manipulation right hence the need for your uh DeFi con there alan so you guys are on this. You guys are talking the same thing there, but it's true. It's a hundred percent true. And so, when you're looking at a company, um, you know that's coming from TradeFi making a, a plunge like this, it's wow. You know, kudos to you guys. Yeah, it's a um, it's a really great strategic partnership. You know, DCG. Um, it says it right on the website. If you look at it, they're at the epicenter of everything that's crypto. Everything. Uh, if you look at their, you know, their subsidiary stack, you know, is it's Grayscale, it's CoinDesk, it's Foundry, Genesis. They have a huge um, hedge fund that you know they're taking and you know putting a lot of money through DeFi. And the really great yeah. thing is, is that they've made a, a really great capital allocation to the um, to the Railgun DAO. And uh, above and beyond the the capital, they're also dedicating a lot of different resources to us, especially when it comes to the folks over at Foundry, they've been a lot of help helping us uh, develop spin up nodes and do testnet type stuff. So Love a really it. great partner to have. Love it, guys. Thank you so much. Chris, thank you for bringing on another incredible guest. Uh, but we've run out of time. So thank you both for coming on. Very insightful stuff. Thank you. Yeah.
Thanks for having us. Guys, you definitely have to check them out. Check out CCP Digital on the web at ccp.digital and our sister podcast at Bad Crypto Pod. Also, make sure you check out Railgun at railgun.org and on Twitter at railgun underscore project. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York. We'll be right back after this.